You are watching a business. Uh, um, my name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiege. This is the sector trends. And as promised, we do have loan LLC in the house today. Now, a lot of questions have been uh, going around on exactly what this balloon internet service is, how it works, what it takes now for, for it to operate this morning. We don't have that conversation. I am joined by the project's manager, that is um, Benjamin Friedman, is the program manager at uh, Loon LLC this morning to just give us bits and a lot of conversations on exactly what we expect then from the Balloon Internet Services in the country. All right, Benjamin, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Anytime, man. You're welcome. Anytime. All right, let's have a get into the conversation on exactly how this balloon internet service operates. I'm telling you, the first time our president did announce it, it was something out of the ordinary. I mean, the Kenyan economy has never seen this sort of service. How does it operate? Could you explain to me in layman terms what are we talking about when we talk about balloon internet? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. So what Loon does is operates a network of balloons in the stratosphere at 20 kilometers high. We're above weather, we're above the birds, we're above any airplanes that might be flying below us. And what we do is we extend the network of a phone company. So in the same way that there might be cell phone towers on the ground, in more urban areas, we're able to extend the network to more remote areas, to rural areas that are unconnected. And so if you're a subscriber of telecom on the ground with a 4G phone in a telecom SIM, you would be able to connect to our balloons just like you would a tower on the ground. And we're very, very excited to be partnering with telecom to extend their coverage to new parts of the country. Pretty much. So how does it operate? Is it, does it keep on moving? How many balloons are we talking about and what distance are we talking about in terms of coverage? Yeah, the balloons are... It will always be in a, in a mesh network. So we'll have dozens of balloons over the country at any given time. And the reason for that is the balloons, the balloons do move. They float on the winds. And so as one balloon might shift over a certain area, another will come in behind it. So we always have a network of balloons at the same time. And if you're on the ground, you would be able to connect just like a standard 4G network. Yes. So. I'm, I'm just want to try to get below this, and you would uh, just uh, give me that leeway, Friedman, because that's what everybody is talking about. So mm -hmm. I, I want to understand, therefore, what goes into making these balloons float at this area. And I will point you out yeah. to a service that was announced across Africa by Facebook, and everybody was talking about how it failed because it didn't get to take off. So what keeps these balloons floating, Friedman? What we do is we have lift gas inside of the balloons. And when we launch them from our site in Puerto Rico, it then will take uh, three or so weeks for the balloons to navigate uh, over to the country. And when we have the gas in the air, we're able, to take the, we're able to take air in and out of the balloons to go up and down in the stratosphere because there's different wind currents at different altitudes. And so we kind of float on the different currents to find uh, the, the right place where we want to stay in order to provide service for telecom subscribers. Now, the announcement was made that this deal had been taken up by telecom, and we do know that the biggest coverage in terms of 4G is not actually held by telecom. We don't have the biggest operator, which is Safaricom. So what really promoted you or led you to make a decision we want to work with telecom, which in reality doesn't have a bigger coverage in relation to Safaricom? We've been, we've been really, really happy to be working with Telcom. They're a terrific, they're a terrific company. They're very innovative. They're forward thinking. So for us, it's been a fantastic partnership. And we've been working with them over the last years in order to bring the service to Kenya, to extend their network to areas where they don't have coverage already for 4G subscribers. All right, so are we saying that these areas that you intend to cover, you've already done a study on it, and are you saying that, well, once we do start to get the service, then it's going to be sufficiently covered? Yeah, the beauty of the loon system, in some ways, is, the, is our flexibility. We're able to navigate balloons to different areas where telecom might want us to serve. And so by doing that, we can give a connection to people who are on the ground. And there was actually a, a study that was done recently by a third party that was able to say that our 4G coverage is comparable to terrestrial coverage. So you might not even know 
that you're connected to the Loon network, if you're on the ground, you'll just know that you had coverage in the area where you didn't previously. All right. Now, when we get the announcement, it was in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic because the president was saying, well, we need these services now because majority of the Kenyan population was actually going to start working from home. But from what you're telling me is that this research was already going on. The research we had been doing in a, in a different market, pardon me, that was that had been doing as we were doing testing uh, in Peru, in fact. And so that study we were very happy with and we were very confident will be applicable, of course, in Kenya. It's the same service that we will be providing in Kenya for telecom subscribers. And, and for us, it's very important to be part of, uh, to be providing connectivity in this COVID response period. And so whether it's connecting for healthcare reasons or for education or for communication with loved ones, in this time, Loon is very, very eager to be able to provide service to telecom subscribers, especially in this moment. Another question that therefore everybody is talking about, Benjamin, this morning is, well, how far is the project as we speak now? What can we say of the Balloon Internet Services Project in Kenya? Yeah, in order to get started, there's a few more things that we're working on, and we've come a very long way over the last few weeks. We still need to complete network the final network testing, and we've been doing that as we've had balloons over the country over the last few weeks. We also are gathering wind data. So as the balloons navigate at 20 kilometers, we need to better understand the wind currents over Kenya. And then the last thing is building up the size of the fleet. So Loon was also unfortunately affected by coronavirus, so it took a little bit of time for us to put in procedures to be able to launch balloons safely from our launch site. And so over the last weeks, we've been able to resume launches and bring balloons from Puerto Rico over to Kenya. So as those three components move farther along, we anticipate being able to serve over the next weeks. All right, could you put a timeline on that, if you may? <laughs> it's big news, everybody's waiting for that around here. Absolutely, we completely understand the interest and we are equally excited to be able to start serving over the next couple of weeks. Couple of weeks will be good, isn't it? All right, let's therefore talk about um, just the way in which your company has been doing these services. Would you say that because you are in the business of providing this, that you do know that very well that once you cross over to Kenya, it's not going to be the same story, the same way that Facebook promised so much and we didn't get to see much, Benjamin? Yeah, and for us, I mean, we're very, very excited to be starting to serve. We have the balloons over the country. And in other, in other parts of the world, we've proven that the service works, and we're very excited just to extend that now to Kenya. And we've been working closely with Telcom to ensure that the networks are fully integrated, that there's a seamless connection for subscribers. So if you're on a terrestrial tower or you're switching to Loon, you wouldn't even know the difference. So we're very eager to get started, and we've been very happy to have the support and interest from the Kenyan public. Every nation is talking about the possibility of moving to 5G. And I will tell you, Huawei just did announce the other day that we'll be actually venturing into 5G technology in the country right now. We start from back to the question, Benjamin, why wasn't 5G on the table if at all we're talking about unlocking the uncovered areas within the Kenyan economy? Yeah, I mean, for us and for Telcom, the, the goal is to, is to start with 4G. I mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of parts of the country that still are unconnected at all. They don't even have 2G. And so for us, 4G is it's a, it's the right place to start in order to extend the networks. And the beauty also of the Loon system is that it's future proof, is that we're able to adjust the equipment that's on our tower, or that's on our tower that's at, at, at 20 kilometers. So in the future, as 5G becomes more and more prevalent around the world, we can make adjustments to our equipment in order to, to bring 5G to new, to new parts of the world. But for the time being, we'll be starting with 4G. So we do understand that this deal is just between you and the Telcom Kenya, as we do more of it. Could you explain to me into deeper details on exactly what sort of deal that we're getting from Loon NLC and Telcom Kenya? What parts are you playing? What parts is Telcom Kenya playing? Yeah, so uh, uh, the way that, that Loon operates is we extend the network of a, of a telco. So for us, we're, we're providing uh, an extension to their terrestrial network. So we'll, in a sense, be providing a pipe that goes uh, in the sky at 20 kilometers. Telcom, it's still their network. So they will continue to be the, the provider for the customer. 
They will handle all of the building, the data, the data transfer. Um, Loon will just be providing the extension of the network to those areas. So if you're a telecom subscriber, you, you won't be having any interaction with Loon. Loon is providing the service to telecom, and telecom continues to be the front end and the interaction point with all of their subscribers. Pretty much now for uh, Friedman. Now, the conversation also locally here is that we do know that Telcom is getting into a merger with Airtel Kenya, therefore, which we do expect, therefore, that the market share is going to increase, which means that you'll be supporting a bigger base with your service. Did you expect that the increased numbers, therefore, of subscriptions from these two mobile um, entities locally, that the quality of the service is not going to be compromised? Have you factored that in before you say, well, it's going to be just a seamless service within the Kenya network. Yeah, we, the way that Loon is configured is that we wouldn't expect there to be any uh, any impact as we have more subscribers. We're always able to add more balloons to increase the coverage area that we're able to provide. Um, so we don't we don't anticipate that that would be a challenge for us, and we would be absolutely thrilled to be able to serve more Kenyan subscribers um, as time moves on. All right, now the question now for that um, everybody is also asking about is, yes, we do have these 4G uh, balloons that are coming into the country. Is this the only possible way to unlock areas that have lesser penetration? Is it a long-term solution or it is a short-term solution as we look for ways to unlock these regions that are not well covered? Well, Luna actually absolutely intends to be able to, to provide coverage eventually throughout the country. I mean, we'll be starting in the areas that are close to our ground infrastructure. So we have ground infrastructure in, in Nairobi, in Nakuru, in Nyeri. And so this enables us to connect to the internet. So we'll be, we'll be in those areas and then extending outwards throughout the country. And we absolutely would be able to provide coverage to as many people as possible throughout the country in the in certainly the rural areas in the in the most remote areas so it is our intention to be in the country for for um, throughout that extension well, your company is now on the spotlight, especially in the country at this time when we're talking about a heavy internet connection need when most of the populations are working from home. But would you talk to me about this venture? How will you rate the performance of your company in the other ventures where you have been into for somebody to know what else also that you have performed in in terms of giving internet services? Yeah, we've seen... As I mentioned, the, the third party report was, was very important for us because we were, we were thrilled to see that uh, a, a neutral party was evaluating our service next to the terrestrial service. And they were able to determine that our service is, is comparable to a terrestrial service. So if you're on a 4G network on the ground, you wouldn't even know that you are connecting to, to a balloon. We're, we're very excited to be coming to Kenya um, very, very soon because uh, it's our first deployment in Africa. Um, Kenya is obviously a very forward-looking and innovative country, and for us, it's been a fantastic place to bring our service to Africa for the first time, and we're looking forward to, the, to that partnership continuing. It's a new area that your company wants to get into, and when we're talking about commercializing these services now, it's also going to be sort of like a new venture, especially when we're talking about a third world economy like Kenya. What sort of challenges there are for Friedman do you expect to run into? Because that is where another conversation point really comes into when we're talking about commercializing a new project in, a, in an economy like Kenya's. We've learned a lot so far, and we're very, very grateful to have been doing the work in Kenya. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a few things that we've needed to do with telecom in order to, to prepare. So we've had to bring our ground infrastructure into the country. We've had to interconnect with telecom's network. We've had to now do network testing and launch the balloons. And at each step of the way, we've learned what it takes to, to bring this uh, into, you know, to, full, to full service, um, whether we will be providing service now uh, in the coronavirus response period or otherwise. So it's been hugely valuable for us as a company to go through this process with Telcom and to be doing this in Kenya. Um, and we know that wherever Loon might go next, that we're well suited to do that based on what we've learned through our partnership in Kenya.
pretty much talk to me there for post COVID-19 because we're saying well we have to wait for a couple of weeks for us to start experiencing these services in the country so talk to me about post COVID-19 which I'd like to think is going to be about fostering these services to sort of make them be felt around the country what do we expect therefore once you make your first reintroduction into the country yeah I mean we're we're very um we're very pleased to be able to to be uh, to provide a response right now in this period, but to your point, we want to be able to be serving far beyond this this COVID nineteen period, um, and that's where it comes to it, continuing to extend the network for telecom and to provide service now when it's needed most to be able to connect with loved ones and to provide coverage for educational purposes or for healthcare purposes. But but we we intend to to be serving in Kenya with telecom long after this COVID nineteen response period. Is this, would you say it's a solution for, I would say, I like to say, developing economies as opposed to developed economies? Is that what I'm getting from you, Friedman? That's not really the way that we think about the solution that we provide. We, it's really that we provide a solution wherever there are uncovered people. And so whether that's in Kenya or in the United States or other places around the world, it really is our, ambitious, our ambition to provide service where there isn't any. Then that, it doesn't really matter where... Where a, where a country is in the world um, or how developed they might be because they're uncovered people um, really throughout the world. All right. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Friedman. It has been lovely. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the day. Nice one too, sir. All right, that's exactly now what we do know so far about the 4G balloon internet services from Lona LLC. Now, we do have the confirmation that it's just a couple of weeks now for, for us to continue or to start experiencing these services in the country. And we do have also that confirmation that it's going to be also post COVID-19. All that we have to say is that thank you very much for being part and parcel of our show this morning. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kierke. Okay.